everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Well, it's wedding season, so I have a card created here that I'm going to share with you um, for a wedding. So my sister was going to a wedding and asked if I could make a card that she could take with her. So this is all the tools and supplies that I'm going to use for the card here. So I'm starting with an A2 size folded card, just regular side fold. And I also have this cardstock from Michaels. Now this comes from the Roses Paper Collection. And so this is what that pack looks like. And I'm going to use the one on the extreme left side, the lightest kind of blush tan pink color. I also have some pearlized paper from Michaels from their open cardstock. I have this leftover from another project, and so I'm going to use it here. I'm going to use the Happy Wedding stamp set from Lawn Fawn, as well as the coordinating dies. And I also have this stencil from Simon Says Stamp, and it's called Heart Mandala, and it's so pretty, and I think it'll be fun to use this in the background, and it has hearts in it too. I also have some circle templates, and I've picked a couple sizes that I'm going to need for this project. And I also have these borders from Lawn Fawn as well. I'm going to use Memento ink in the color Desert Sand because I want to do no line water coloring. And then I have my acrylic block. And I'm also going to use these pearlescent colors from Fine Tech, and that's going to match that pearlized paper. I'm going to need my ink blender for this and a spare um, foam disc as well. So let's get started. So to begin, I'm going to prepare my card base first. And so I'm going to coat the card with this Roses cardstock. So it's a little bit thinner than just a regular card would be. So instead of just using it as my base, that Roses color, I'm going to put it on top of a thicker cardstock that's already folded to that A2 size that I want to use. So I've run my tape roller on the card and I'm just going to put this on the corner of the roses and I'm going to leave a little bit of margin around the edge because I do want to trim this down to a perfect flush edge with that base. Now before I do, I'm just going to pop it out of the paper so I don't have to work with such a clumsy bigger piece of paper when I'm trimming. So bringing this to my cutting mat, I'm going to use my metal back ruler or my metal cork back ruler and flipping it over so that I don't have any margin for error with the cork lifting the ruler off the page. I'm just going to run my X-Acto knife along the edges of the card and trim that roses colored cardstock to the same size as my card. So there's the beginning of my card base. Next, I'm going to work on sizing it where I want the window to go and putting the heart mandala on top of that. So I have two sizes. One is going to be the window, and then the bigger one is going to be the template that I use to put the paint or the ink down into. So I want to make sure that I exceed the edges of the window just in case there's a little bit um, of shifting in the centering of those windows. I have some margin for error. So I'm going to bring in my stamps and just kind of do a quick overlay of how I want the composition to be just to make sure I've got my spacing correct. Um, everything that I'm thinking is going to fit okay in proportion with the size of the circle I have and where I'm thinking everything's going to land. So I put my ruler at the top as well just to have, have that little reference of center if I need it. And I'm just going to put this larger circle over top now that I have the proportions and I'm going to use that as my guide to pencil around the edge so that I know that I need to keep the paint out at least to this area. So now I have this ready to put the ink on next. So I'm going to tape this down to my desk with some painter's tape. It's just a low sticky tape and it'll keep everything in place that I need for this project, for this part. So here's the stencil and I like the heart so I'm going to make sure that that's facing the center to the top and is quite noticeable in the background. And so I'm going to bring back in the smaller circle that's going to be my frame. I just want to make sure that I'm aware of what parts of that mandala are going to fall into the window area. And I want to make sure that that heart gets shown. It's not cut off at the top or something. So once I have that in place, I'm just going to put some more painter's tape and really push that down firmly and attach that to my desk. I have this number eight Grumbacher brush and this is a watercolor brush. And so I'm going to use that to put the paint onto the foam ink blender with. So first I want to get the paint worked up and activated. So I've put a, quite a bit of water into the paint pot. And this paint in particular absorbs water very quickly and it dries very quickly too. So I know it will thicken up very fast. And so I've put an over amount of water because I will need a lot more paint. 
And so I know that that's going to give me the result I want. And it's going to happen quite quickly. I don't have to wait too long for that to thicken up. So now that I have it at a good consistency, I put it on the foam disc with my watercolor brush. And then very softly, I'm dabbing over top of the mandala, the stencil, and just lightly tapping and laying down ink. Now, even though I'm using the white pearl, the lightest color, I can still see the ink going down on the paper. And so I'm able to see that it's distributing pretty good. I don't want to press too hard just in case the ink is still kind of watery or too wet. I don't want it to run underneath the stencil. So just doing light taps and just a lot of light taps is the best way to do this. So now I have it ready and I only put um, a single layer on. If I did another layer, that background would be more defined, but I don't want it to be too crisp because I want my critters to be the focal point of this card. So I want this to be more like a background element. And so I'm okay with the softer edges. So now I'm going to prepare the window for the card that's going to go over top. And so I just estimated how much space I need to leave on the outside um, to allow to cover the card. And so here I'm using the card to measure the extreme distance that I would need to fit that into. And then I'm going to pop it out so that I can put this through my Sizzix die cutting machine. So here's a look at that after it's popped out. So I have my window. And so now I need to center this over my artwork. And I have a little trick that I do to, to get the center. And I'll show you as we go through the process. So I'm going to start with my ruler at the top and just centering the card, even though I didn't really center the paper the, with the window, so that didn't really help a lot. Unless I put a tick mark or something at the top of the page, that could help me find center. But I did this a different way. So using the pattern stencil, I really made sure that it was equal on both sides with the window showing. And then I came back with a light. And if you held this up to a full light, like um, a window or something, you can see both edges at the same time. I just took the flashlight to show you. But basically, I just held it up to the light to make sure that both edges were the same and measured them with the ruler. And so I was able to see that that window was centered. So now I'm taping this down and creating a hinge so that I can prepare this better and put it all into place. So I'm going to remove the, the first bit of tape that was just holding it in place. And so now that I have that hinge, I can flip the front part up with the window cut out. And that will allow me time to put the tape roller down along the edges so that I can push those back together and create the perfect centered window over top of my background. So the tape was super handy and so now I just have to push it down into place and secure it and it's already on the side. So now I'm going to remove that painter's tape. You want to make sure that you're peeling it at a sharp angle and that will reduce the chance of having rips in your paper. So now I'm ready to trim this and I'm going to trim it the exact same way I did the previous layer, just using my metal ruler and lining up my X-Acto knife along the edge of that card and just trimming the overhang. And so this way I ensure a very crisp, perfect edge with all those layers. So now I'm going to cut out the part where I want my sentiment to go, so this banner. And I'm using the center sized or the middle sized um, die cut from that Lawn Fawn pack. So now I'm ready to work on my no line watercolor. Now I have to confess, I've never done no line watercolor before or any kind of no line coloring. And I was kind of nervous about doing this, but it turned out okay. And I'm really happy with how it came out. So I'm going to show you all the steps that I did. Um, I stamped this first with that desert sand. Uh, the desert sand is a really soft, light color. And I seen this recommended on a video from Christina Warner. And so that's what um, inspired me to pick it up and I'm really glad I have this um, to use for no line coloring it turned out really good and I really enjoyed it even though it took a lot more time and it's definitely something I would do again so if you want to do this technique basically you just want to start with your darkest color in the shadows and you can build up color too so don't feel that you have to go dark immediately you can start with a lighter wash or a lighter layer and work up those layers and that's sort of what I did. I have a lighter blue that I started and used um, from the bottom corners of my little chicks. And so what I like to do is work from the outline and then bring the color inward. 
So to cover up that desert sand outline, I like to paint over that line first and that brings the color, introduces the color that I'm putting down. So in this case, it was the blue. And then just pushing the ink up into the space and then filling the rest up with water. So what I like to do is lay down my color um, with the paint first and then rinse my brush completely, but making sure it's pretty wet or damp. I like to bring that and just bring that back in and blur the lines of where my ink was left from the last um, application. So you can see here as well as the same idea. I'm working from the outside in. So my first bit of ink that I'm laying down is on the edges and I push that into the center towards the center and then I come back with a clean brush that has a little bit of water on it and I just blend out the topped edges of the paint. So this bleeds it into the white space. It's kind of like Copic coloring in a way. Um, and then I can get that nice gradient. And the nice thing about watercolor is if you have good watercolor paper, you can layer quite a few colors. You can get that paper wet and activate it for quite a few layers and it doesn't rip or tear or ball up. Um, if you have very good quality water paper. If you don't have, if you have a student grade or something, then you can maybe get two or three layers depending on how wet your paper is. Um, but you want to make sure that you can get your colors decided very quickly because you won't have much chance to work with the colors too much before it starts to get thin and the paper loses um, kind of its binding and it can't hold together as nicely. So I guess if I had one piece of advice, if you're looking to get into watercolor with no line coloring, the brushes don't really matter and the, the ink doesn't really matter if you're using a student grade watercolor, for example, but your paper is the most important thing. So if you're going to spend money on anything, I would definitely recommend 100% cotton watercolor paper. Now for the painting here, I'm using a liner brush. And so this is a very fine liner brush. I believe it's a size one. I'm just going to check here. It's a zero actually, so it's from Princeton, and it is a mini detailer round zero. So you wanna have a very small brush so that you have the chance to work in those small areas, especially with stamps. They don't give a lot of room, they're tiny, or kind of smaller elements, so you don't have a lot of room to work with the watercolors. And so the smallest detailed brush you can get would be your best bet. So you should be able to find those at any craft store, um, watercolor brushes that are in a smaller size, the detailer is definitely what you want to use. Um, you definitely have more control when you're coloring. It's almost like using a pen or a marker because it has that fine point. So you do have um, more ability there. So once I have my coloring down and I have my shading done, I like to come in and just emphasize the shadows a little bit more and I do this with Copic coloring as well. I really like when the shadows are really punchy and dark and that really gives a strong contrast against the base color and that way it just makes it feel a little bit more three-dimensional. And then coming into and thinking about where the shadows would be if the light source was coming from a, a different angle and considering where the shadows might be elongated in some cases uh, and I like to do that layer last as well. And so now I'm just moving over to my bell and doing all the same techniques, just keeping the same kind of methodology when putting the ink down um, or the paint. So I'm just working from the shadow area and pushing the paint out. And then once I have the paint laid down on the paper, I do come back with an empty brush that's been rinsed with a little water in it and just bleed those edges off into the white space. And so here I'm doing multiple layers of that same technique, just trying to build up those shadows in the bell. And I also enjoy mixing the colors too. So I'll start by laying down a blue, but then I might bring in some purple into the deepest part of those shadows just to make the shadow colors look a little, a little bit more interesting. Now with this, I tried to keep a similar color palette. I wanted something that was different from the pink because I did want it to pop a little bit, but I still wanted it to feel soft because it's a wedding card. And I really wanted the color palette to be pretty muted and pretty monochromatic for the most part. Um, so really I'm only playing with some pinks, purples, and blues in this case. And so I found that that really helped. Um, I thought it just looked nice, it was a nice balance, but it still stood out from the background. So using my rose gold pen, I put a few details in the flower um, on the little chick's hair bow. And now I'm ready to pop these out with my dies. 
So I'm going to put those down with some post-it tape and I'm just trimming this up and running it through my, Biz, uh, my Sizzix Big Kick machine. So here I have them all popped out and I'm just going to lay them in place. Again, just double checking positioning and getting ready for the next step. Now, because I normally stamp with um, a black ink, I would normally stamp my sentiment with black, but in this case, I really wanted to keep the colors very muted and I wanted everything to match. And so I decided to do the same technique for the sentiment. I've come in with the desert sand and stamped that sentiment. And then I'm gonna come over with the blue that I used in the chicks and paint over the letters that were stamped. And so I found this was a, the best result because it kept the colors the same from the artwork, from the critters, and so it helped that card stay balanced. Instead of trying to struggle to find a stamp um, or an ink pad, rather, that would match the colors that I chose with the watercolor. And this way, this technique is the same, the application is the same, and the medium is the same, so it does all match really nicely. And if you know me and you've seen other videos, you know I love line work and drawing so this was actually a very therapeutic moment and I really enjoyed um, just tracing over the letters taking my time and with that liner brush I was able to get the lines very nice and even and consistent so now I'm going to put all my elements on with foam tape my background's pretty flat I do have to fit this into an envelope so I didn't want to make it too bulky um, but just to give a little bit more emphasis on the focal points I'm going to put them on foam tape so first I'm going to start with my cake and just finding the position I want it in. I'm going to use my little chicks too and kind of line them up and, and eyeball where I want this to go. So I'm going to push that down into place and then I'm ready for the next item. So I have my little chicks down and they're my little cake toppers and my bride and groom. And then I'll do the bell next that hangs over the window opening. So now the last piece is just putting on that sentiment. It is pretty thin, that border, um, that flag. So I do want to make sure that I cover the entire thing with foam tape from end to end, just in case um, there's any pressure put on any parts of that, that it doesn't sag in the middle um, or lift up or curl on one of the ends. So I put foam tape all across the back and I have that in place now. So this is the final card. I'm really excited with how it turned out. It took a little bit of time to do all the coloring, but I just thought the result was so nice and I loved how soft it was. It really felt more like a wedding card, I feel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this look at my adventure in no-line watercolor. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.